Well, hello, beautiful people, and happy Sunday. Whew, I'm excited for this one. It's your girl, Janie, Janie Booz, and you are welcome to another episode of Janie of Canada Live, where we're bringing industry experts to talk about their career journey, share tips, share stories, facts, data, and everything in just a hope to make sure you can thrive, you can succeed and achieve your dreams as a professional immigrant and newcomer to Canada or whatever country you may be working from or living in right now, because this is for you. And today I have a very, very special guest, but let's not go too fast with that. Welcome and happy Sunday. And I will introduce my channel real quick, but I want you to use the next 30 seconds to set your intentions for this amazing hour we're about to have together because it's going to be So, we are here. Our next guest on this Journey of Canada episode is an amazing, phenomenal speaker. She is an inspirational speaker, a pro athlete, an amazing wife, an energy goddess. I colloquially call her the people's exec because she's an amazing leader over at TD Bank. But before we bring her onto stage, for those of you who may be wondering, who is in k one for Robinson? Watch out for this video real quick. Girl shirts. I see you over there in the red and you beside her in the blue and red up there. I see that handsome man that's waving. Yeah, I see you. I see all of you. So I'm talking to you. I'm pouring into your circumstance right now. I don't know what you're going through, but the main fact that you're here means that everything you've had to go through in life, you've gotten through because you wouldn't be here otherwise. So I want you to walk like you matter. Talk like you matter. Next time you walk into your piece, when you walk in like this and you say, yo, I matter. No, seriously, right? Walk like that. I walked into my P3 before my boss said anything to me. True story. I said, yo, Rav, when you get me, you're getting an exceptional employee. I said, so let's talk about my rating, right? right? So I want you to walk like you matter and speak like you matter and think like you matter because you actually matter. And without further ado, do, let's welcome the You Matter Queen. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> if I had known that intro, I would have my You Matter shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> welcome. Welcome today to the amazing session we're about to have together. So for those of you, I would love for you to introduce yourself, but I want to share with my people how we met really quickly. So it, it probably was almost two years now. I went to an event here in Toronto. I, if you know me, I've talked about the importance of networking a lot. And I went to a networking event that was held by Cough P. And you were the, you were the keynote speaker. I was there to meet people, but I remembered like you started speaking and you were like, I am God's gift. I'm booming and I'm like, yes! And I, I just knew because I've always had this energy that a lot of times is not professional in some places or where I'm from. And then I saw you and I'm like, oh my God, the possibility. And so that's how I and I met and then we became friends. But more importantly, she became my mentor after all of this well. And without going too deep into that, Enki, please let the people know a little bit more about you. Who are you today? Oh my God, who am I today? Well, I am a cool ass black woman. I yeah. did. I woke, up, I, honestly, I woke up and I was like, what am I going to, uh, what am I going to wear today? Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to come on as a cool ass black woman right now. Um, and I feel that I am. I am a cool ass black woman. I'm very proud of the skin that I'm in. Um, and it takes some time. It takes work to have to do that. You have to reaffirm yourself every single day. And I do that through mantras that, you know, um, I've come to believe, right? And I think it has to start somewhere. It has to start with what do you believe to be true cool about yourself? And if there's, if, if anyone is, you know, for everyone that's watching this, I'm, I'm hoping that you recognize that this is an opportunity to learn. Yeah. And, you know, I would say start to monitor yourself. When people ask you, you know, to introduce yourself, do you start with what you do? You know, what you're paid for, you know, um, the things that you do? Or do you start with who you are? 
you know? So you can start, I would tell you that I'm born to win. I'm no, I don't play to lose. I play to win, you know? I'm designed for accomplishment. I have accomplished and great in many things. I am um, creating amazing experiences for myself and others. And this would be such an example, right? Like Janie and I are gonna create an amazing experience. We don't even know what the next thing we're gonna say. We just, we're here, we're present. Um, and in all of our glory, we're here to like give of ourselves. You know, I am a human that I believe has been endowed with the seeds of greatness. I have on my vision board, the best way to make a billion dollars is to help a billion people. And so that's my guiding, that's my guidepost every single day. How can I bring my love in all of its fullness into every single day? You know, I don't, I don't think there's anyone that starts their day to say, I'm, I am going to create enemies today. <laughs> No, you ultimately are good. Yes. And I am radical about my goodness, if that's a word. Um, I'm a radical about my love. I'm radical about how I show up. And I'm not perfect. God, I'm not even striving for perfection. I'm just striving to um, be fully empowered. And, and sometimes empowerment could look like power. Sometimes empowerment can look like vulnerability. Sometimes empowered can look like, you know, calm. Sometimes empowered looks like kindness. Like, so whatever empowers you in the moment, the one common denominator, in my opinion, is being present. I am somebody who strives to be as present as possible. And uh, I know that I'm getting better. So, you know, that's, um, that's a lot about what drives my human. Other than that, I am born to amazing Nigerian parents. Um, whom um, migrated to Canada in, in the 60s to get my dad to get an education and brought my mom over mm -hmm. and they decided to stay. And I learned from them the art of discipline, the art of education, um, the art of, you know, just driving, you know, driving yourself to do and to believe in, in whatever you believe that you want to do or can achieve. And I've been doing that for 48 years, I turned 48 on Tuesday. <laughs> Happy belated birthday, thank you. thank you, thank you. So, I mean, I could go, this whole hour could be, I mean, that's the thing too, right? Like, especially if you have 48 hours, of 48 years of life, you know, you can be able to talk about 48 years, 48 hours about yourself, you know? Like, we shy away from talking about ourselves, like yeah. ourselves, in the, not what we do, again, it's like just who we are. You know? I, uh, I love that. I love helping people start to recognize there's value in talking about who they are. Thank you. You actually taught me that. And I remember when we've had conversations before, you'd say, just watch a lot of people today. And it's sometimes crowd mentality. When we're asked to introduce ourselves, we're like, well, uh, my name is Jamie and I'm chief of staff over. And I'm like, is that all there is to you? Because that's what you're paid for. But who are you made for? And thank you for sharing that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Honestly, like, over the years, I've come to know you, and, and a lot of people know. I remember the first day I met you, I was like, and then we had a conversation because I was like, oh my God, this energy. And I was like, oh my God, what can I do to like shine my light? Because I really want to, but a lot of times it's not accepted in spaces. And that day you gave me homework. And every time I have a conversation with you, you give me homework and something to think about. <laughs> and, and sometimes in Nigerian um, social media, people are like, oh my God, all this aspire to perspire people, always motivating people, like nothing else is going on in their lives. Like, are you in this world with me? Because you just seem to be overly positive. So I just want us to like clear that air right now. And I want you to share something with us that shows like, because I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world, but people always seem like these positive people are just not dealing with it. So let's start with you, because I want people to feel comfortable in this conversation. Can yeah. you share something, because you're very positive, that mm -hmm. has hit you and you had to rebalance yourself in or reintroduce yourself to yourself yeah. so that people can just realize, that even though you're this big overachiever, you're still human. Yeah, <laughs> I am definitely human. I bleed, I, I bleed blood, you know? <laughs> You know, it, it's funny. I wish I remembered, but in my journal today, um, I have this kindness journal, and it's 365 days, and uh, I just I don't remember, but it, it actually um, lines up perfectly. It talks about the power of positivity, and um, and I just I believe I believe that I am positive. It starts with a belief. So if I believe that I'm positive, then that means that in everything in my life, it's about finding the good in it. Yeah. It's about remaining optimistic, it's about not allowing it to tear you down. That said, 
I think that um, I think that because we don't know how our lives are going to unfold, nobody has that secret ball that God is guiding, you know, guiding who I am. And the more that I allow myself to surrender to that, yep, I'm guided. And so then, when anything shows up, um, I have to allow myself to to get to know myself in that experience. And so, one of the most current things that I'm working through and unfolding through is my dad. My dad is um, he's older; he's only five this year. And he's, uh, he's just, you know, and there's been a lot of moments through this journey of having an elder parent that's sick that I'm learning about, you know, I'm not as patient as I thought I was. Um, I am um, finding areas where I'm, I'm selfish, you know, and need to, need to be selfless more. And I'm learning fearful faces, right? Like all of that, if it's absence of love, it's, it's, it's predicated by fear. And I'm allowing myself to say, okay, this is a fearful moment. And, and it's allowed, right? Like I'm, I'm actually allowing myself to feel that fear, but then saying, what's the next, what's the one thing that I can actually do to continue to move forward, right? And, and that's key, like life is, Continuing, which means that we should always be in forward movement. We should always be thinking forward. When you, the minute you start thinking forward, you've, you've essentially stopped, and now you're 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 going to be in a resistance mode because everything is still moving forward, right? And I think COVID nineteen is a, a total example of, of of that. You know, think about it. Seven point five billion people in the world are going through this, right? And there are some that are thriving. There are some, if you think about, uh, what's his name? Um, why am I going to forget his name? Um, Jeff Bezos. Yeah. $13 billion. $13 billion. <laughs> you know? So there's opposite ends of the spectrum. The question is, where are you placing yourself on that spectrum of, of possibility? You know, And for me, it's like, I'm, I'm flowing. I'm moving forward. I am using this time to I call it functional speed to to really to time with myself to, to do more to do more and so that whenever you know COVID nineteen is almost like what we say is behind us, you're out of the gate, you know, just you're good to go. Fly right out of the out of the starting block, yes. right? And um, yeah, so that's why I, I try to encourage everybody. I am certainly not human. Um, sorry, I'm certainly not human. I I have challenges too. I think the difference between what some people might say, well, you know, she's superhuman, how she's so positive, is that I still choose to find the good in everything. Period. That's it. It's part of my value system. Still choose. 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 To find the good in everything. And let's talk about choices. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that because a lot of times we always feel like we do not have options. And with that, because I've known you for a while now, I've heard you speak a lot of times, always impeccable. However, one thing you shared is your name is in Kitchener. And you always say, I boom in Kitchener, which means God's gift. I am God's gift. You are God's gift to a lot of people, to the billion people who are some of them who just don't know we get some of you are who are on the call today. And one thing you shared is you didn't you didn't come into this realization or this ownership of yourself till about your 40s. So there must have been something that had been holding you back, which is the premise of this conversation today on yeah. how to overcome limiting beliefs. Yeah. Can you share with us what that was and like how you said, you know what, I'm gonna choose different. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. No problem. I mean, I won't go into, obviously the details don't matter, but I hit a period in my life where, you know, something that was, you know, in my, let's just say closest to me. So a very like, a personal relationship that the closest relationship in my life. Um, and, you know, sort of career aspirations weren't working in my opinion, based on whatever plan I had set out in my mind that they should <laughs> like, and um, and it felt it felt dark. Like it felt like I don't know how else to explain it. I didn't see the light in any of them. And uh, I credit a really very awesome friend of mine um, that you know was brave enough, right? Because sometimes as friends, we have to be brave enough to say, you know, if I have to share this, even if it means that the relationship may not 
survive it, you know, but it's important, you know, because I can't allow that person to continue to be going through that. And that's what happened in my life. You know, she, a friend of mine, you know, was on her own spiritual and personal growth journey. And she started to feel disconnected from the right? And um, and she guided me by sharing the book, A Return to Love by Marion Williamson. And she said, you know, I encourage you to read it. Yes. And I had to make a choice. Read it, don't read it. And I always say, and now read to learn, read to, read to execute. Yes. Right, read to learn, learn, read to execute. And I read to learn, and I immediately got into it. And I'm like, well, this book is a bestseller. Why don't I just try it out? Why don't I just try what I'm learning? And I did, and it was life changing. And simply, it was about recognizing for one that I was born into love. The fact that I know what hate is or fear is means I learned that. Yes, we, we are all born babies, right? And we learn everything else: fear, we learn rejection, we learn unforgiveness, we learn, you know, resentment, we learn jealousy, we learn all these things that are absence of love. The main fact that you learn something means that you can unlearn it also. Yes. And I just, I, I went in. I said, you know, it's time to learn pain, shame, frustration, rejection, resentment, jealousy, unforgiveness. That was the biggest one. Unforgiveness. Man. Like, it, it, to me, it's like forgive instantaneously. Because mm. it has nothing to do with the other person. I've studied unforgiveness. So all of the books I read about how to maintain a positive spirit, how to be super awesome, how to be a better human, how to be great. All talk about you gotta unforgive. You gotta, you know, you have to be a forgiving spirit. So if they're all talking about that, okay, I'm about that. You know, yeah. And, um, doesn't mean that you forget. Doesn't mean that you're loving the person or whatever. But it means that it's not something that's holding you back or holding you down. Or because at one point or other, you become your own abuser <laughs> by continuously allowing you to be to be angry, to be frustrated, to be brought down by that one situation that didn't even happen in the present circumstance. It happened somewhere in the world. <laughs> so I learned that quick, really quick. And that has been such a life-giving learning. And uh, yeah, so return to love, I, and, and it's true. Like at some point or other, you have to make the choice. I'm gonna return myself back to love. And if you understand the value of love, and the, and the value of loving other people for you, then every step forward from that point where you, you know, should be should be built in a place of love. And that's why I, I, I talk about, you know, heart-centered leadership, you know, bringing love into my leadership, you know, being radical about love, because it's pretty awesome. <laughs> it is pretty awesome. And thank you, because you actually did share that book. And so if you're in Toronto, or if you're in Canada, there's an app called Libby, and I learned this from one of our friends, All Out. And so if you don't have access to purchasing books, you can rent it from the library. And I definitely recommend it. I just actually placed a hold on the book and I'm gonna be reading it soon. Speaking about books and learning and executing and the understanding of forgiveness, if you wanna truly come out of stuff and just like deal in love, you've also shared um, something of the four agreements. One of oh. which is, the sec I think the second one about things, not taking things personally. So a lot of times, the reason we're not doing stuff is because someone has said to us something that is not true. And, or we have believed it to be true. Again, limiting beliefs. How can you actually now, me, how can you actually navigate that and say, how can I not take this thing personally? They said, Janie, you are not good at this. Like, Janie, you will never be this person. You can't come to Canada. You don't have the money. You can't go to that school. You're not smart enough. You, black woman, like, how can you not take these things personally? Like, how do you not take it personally? So it, it really does. I mean, it really does start with you knowing who you are, right? Um, and it also, I think it's also important, and it takes work to get there. That when people meet you, they're meeting you where you are at on that day. And so if they say something, 
that doesn't resonate well with you, it actually has nothing to do with what they did. It has everything to do with how you ingested what they just said. Okay. And how you ingested it is going to be based on beliefs that already live within you from previous experiences. Mm -hmm. So if you can understand that, like if you can really understand that, then you can't take what they just said personally because they're not responsible for how you ingest it and it make, is making you feel. Gotcha. And so for me, I mean, the best analogy I can give, because I'm in technology, and yes. most people hold a phone or have a computer, is everyone knows about firewalls or security protection, whatever it is. Security protection is not just something that is not configured. It's configured with rules and language and um, um, settings. Um, that it has to communicate in order to know what to spew out and what to allow in. Our humans are no different than that. The better you know yourself, then you can figure your own firewall and security, um, security sort of protocol with those beliefs, things that you know are true about yourself, those experiences that you know have, you know, you've moved from. And and when it's filled with a lot, when those belief systems are filled with a lot of good, then it allows you to um, navigate life a little bit better. As things come at you, measure before you invest, before you take it in, allow that security system to communicate it and evaluate it for this is good and it's going to serve me. And this is not good when we return it to server, uh, to sender. And the best thing about that, and so another analogy is the bouncing ball. Okay. If somebody throws something at you, they know it's not good, and they themselves wouldn't want somebody throwing that at them, it becomes if you do this, you're of you, and they're gonna do this, then you know it was not intended for you, right? But if you're like taking it back and they're like, oh. I love this, then maybe it's like that was a lost experience. But typically, if someone is throwing something at you that's not good, and you do this, and it bounces back to them, and they do this, then know that it wasn't, it was actually not meant for you, right? So, for you, that a little bit more, just that return to sender. Um, and I think you and I have had this conversation. I would say, you know, feedback is, is, a, is a good, one. you know, it's how you use it that um, I had a very little experience this week where I got some feedback. Not some feedback, I got a comment back on something and, and I took it in, I did. And um, it, 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 it hit me, it hit me hard. It was actually, it, it, but I recognized that and met up against the belief system yeah. I have that I have to work on, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the value, my personal value, you know? And you know how 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 I'm communicating with them. Yeah. No. Thank you for sharing that vulnerability about the fact that things still hit you, and then you have to activate your firewall and say, "Is this protocol for us to accept this, or are we just going to let it bounce back?" Because a lot of times, people think think you get to a certain level, and you don't you don't have that anymore. Speaking about certain levels, and you don't have that anymore. How like speaking about what are the kind of things you see? especially from your bird's eye view of being a leader at a big organization like TD Bank, that newcomers do with regards to their careers that you're just like, no, this is not serving you. Some examples, because I want I want this to land with someone today to be like, oh my gosh, like maybe I should check that or reevaluate myself. Can you think of any? Yeah, the first one that comes to mind, and I hear it all, all the time, is I have to start over. Mm. <laughs> I've talked about this one. Too. <laughs> um, that's one, and um, and the other one is, and I'll and I'll elaborate on both of them. And the other one is, um, you know, who I was back, wherever it is that you came from. That's so a lot of contribution. Before you can even sort of embrace what I'm going to say about starting over, the first thing I always need anyone and anyone that's listening to this that is a newcomer, if you still feel, or you, you still articulate, because one of the four agreements, that book is another great book, the four agreements, is be impeccable with the word, right? And it's the word more about yourself than others, right? So if part of the words that you have about yourself is the person I was, 
when, wherever, you know, and you're here now and you've left the person over there. I almost want you to hit pause, okay, on this on this recording. Don't listen to this anymore. Hit pause. I need you to metaphor, I need you to find your way across the seas. I know everyone had to come overseas. Cross the seas back to that country, to wherever that person is, bring them back. Over the seas, infested seas. Just, just do that. You know that imaginary swim, and insert them back in here. Mm. I need you first to be a whole person. You need that amazing person that made you be so happy to leave your country. You need them here because that's the first one. That that person carries a lot of courage, and you need that courage inserted into the person that's here. Mm-hmm. Where you are always, we always need to focus on being whole. We can't leave any part of ourselves out of any of them. But that person has an accent, and you know, here accents are like, oh my god, you have an accent, or you know what I mean. So, how do I do that? Okay, if someone from Nigeria is watching yeah. this, I have an accent. Mm-hmm. We all have an accent, and if there's any person I've met that is so incredibly good at doing this. There's this Timmy Tope has an amazing video where she talks about her accent. We all need to respect, I mean, we can start to get into a diversity inclusion conversation, but it's part of this being inclusive culture. We need to embrace people for who they are. Their accents are part of who they are. And in my opinion, I love accents like that are different than mine. Because there's a melody to them. I mean, I would have to ask somebody, do you feel a melody with my accent? I hope so. Because melodies are fun. You dance with melody, right? So, yeah, I love accents. And I think it's never about your accent. It's about your message. You know, what is your personal message? What is that purpose that you have in life? Because if you communicate that, accent or no accent, depending on what you, where your mind is, that's what matters the most, right? So yeah. always focus on your, forget about the accent. The accent's a beautiful thing. How you use it is what matters, you know? And how so, you use it is what matters. Yeah, how I use my accent is to empower people. Yeah. Because I know there's people in India that listen to my videos. I know there's people in Nigeria that listen to my videos. I know there's people, because I look at my podcast and it's all over the world. And so to them, as they're listening to me, me a gay English person, I have an accent to them. Yes, right? because I don't sound like the people, right? But at the end of the day, they hear and they're empowered by what I have to say. Yes. So I forget about my accent, no matter who I'm talking to. It's more about my message that I'm delivering, right? So focus on your message, who is it, right? And uh, and then the other one about starting new, starting whatever. I think every single day, you should just be a renewed spirit, starting new, starting all over. Every single day is your time and your chance to reset. So really start to maybe change your perspective of how you look at that, okay? So, but let's just see where you come. You come and you land in Canada. How about we look at it as where I was, I had reached a certain sort of level or place in life that, you know, there was success or whatever, however you sort of classify your success or whatever. I think we should all be think our lives as successful. Yeah. And now when you arrive in Canada, don't look at it as I'm starting all over, which means that a lot of times like I'm starting, I'm having to start all over from ground zero. No, I'm going to say that, let's just say that that's a floor. That's a, you know, a floor of a building. You've now stepped onto another floor and you might be at the bottom of that rung, right? Let's just say all of these floors have levels to them. So that's, again, a bring you you're just on another rung with level yeah. at the first level of that run. And so elevate your game because there's a part of your game that should be diminished, right? Yeah. So you're now on a new level with 10, 12 runs, whatever you want to call it, and you're at the first level of that run. I, even me, Canada, if I start a new role today, I'm not forgetting about the roles I had before. I'm like, okay, I'm on another level. There's, if I look at this, there's maybe 10 levels here that I want to do, and I'm starting at level one. Yes. And, no. I'm, and I'm going up from there. 
Mm -hmm. No, I appreciate you sharing that too, because, and that's, I hear that a lot too. Every time it's like, oh, I'm starting over. I don't have Canadian experience. I had that accent. And you, you, I've learned that from the group, which is a group we both are on and from you that people need to stop that starting over mindset. And if you're subscribed to my channel, I've talked about um, top five tips, every new successful newcomer. I do successful like that because it matters what success means to you should actually pay attention to in like things that have been setting you back. And with regards other pieces too, when we hear of Canadian experience, a lot of people are like, well, I think I'm courageous. I think I'm confident. I love my accent. I still show up in a room with all this light and energy. However, I'm met with, I don't have enough Canadian experience. How would you reframe that? Especially when there's not, you know, no matter what you say or in quotes, like I had the experience that recruiter or the person across from the table is telling you, you don't have it. So how can people navigate that type of situation when you're, they're met with that? I think the first thing to realize is that Canadians don't have your experience, right? That's number one. Right? So if you don't have to like I'm the best thing you know about that's about to happen to you. Canadians don't have your experience. Right. So 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 then what does that mean to me? That means to me to really be uber great at communicating the experience that you have. Like uber great at putting figures behind it, at putting depth into it. At, because it'd be no different than me. A new role. I don't have the role of that experience, but that person also doesn't have the experience I have from being in all the companies I've been in, about the, the, the situations I've had to work my way out of, the challenges that I've been hit with. So it's really about understanding what's the strength of your story mm -hmm. and being able to communicate it in a way that it can resonate with the people or person that you're you're talking to or trying to sell yourself to. And so that's first and foremost, right? So I always say I'm becoming like, I'm learning even just in my stage of life is how to really understand and craft the message around the value of what you've done. And a lot of times, like, I mean, I take, I take Nigeria, like I always say, sixth most popular country in the world. Yep. Okay. Nigerians are powerful. They're everywhere around the world. And so if you're someone, for example, from Nigeria, talk about that power. Talk about that position. Like, I mean, the position of power. Talk about the company that you're in. Like, so let's just say you're working for a company and their, you know, their, their total revenue per year is, I don't know, maybe one billion. Yes. In your country, your company, it's one trillion as mm -hmm. an so talk about that. Talk about, you know, what was your organization, your partner doing for that country? Because people can then relate that to what it is here in Canada. And a lot of times they'll start to see like, a, like, an, like an equilibrium, like they'll start to see it as, as being equal. But a lot of times the truth is, I'll be honest with you, a lot of us Canadians are not trying to understand where you came from. Yeah. We're just not, we're not taking the time to try to understand that. And that's where hopefully, you know, um, especially talent people that might be listening to this, I think we need to check ourselves. I think we need to, just like, I think we need to become curious and, and respect that people come with experience and, and the main fact and really understand what they've been able to achieve, especially in a country that is not so easy as Canada. Like mm -hmm. that makes them more resilient, more capable of dealing with challenges and hardships. I mean, we think about how everything here flows with There's a transit system. There's, you know, there's a lot of connectedness. Imagine yeah. a country where somebody is responsible for regional living. Like, if you were to travel to that country, I would wish you luck because things <laughs> would not work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ways to not learn, sort of like show you the shortcut. You know, you have to figure out how do you manage a regional area without ease of transportation, without, you know, sort of the ease of communication, without like ease of connected, connect, uh, 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 And that then builds the human that has been able to not only be able to do that, but smash it. Yes. You know? And so I think we could do a really good job here as hiring managers and um, in understanding the experience yes. that the person that we're interviewing is coming from. Because I think we, we, we make them way too much. We have to be better. And oh. no, 
yeah, thank you for sharing that honesty and transparency because a lot of times as job seekers, I remember even interviewing, there was that, and in some countries, in, in a bout of being professional, it's almost like uh, you're asking for stuff. So you don't challenge the knowledge or the curiosity of the person across the table from you because they're seen as the person who's giving you something versus mm -hmm. you're forgetting that oh. you're bringing value right. to the table. And so with that, that honesty about Canadians not not being curious enough about the experiences of other people, knowing your value, knowing that it's not a they're giving me, it's we're about to share experience together. You are just as much as entitled to interview them as they are of you. Oh, 100%. So when they tell you, oh, you don't have a Canadian experience, you can ask why and mm -hmm. you can proceed when you see that it actually is just based on just a, a lack of curiosity or a lack of knowledge as to where you're from. Then educate them, like you said, with the data and the understanding and the stories of what my achievements mean from, a, you don't know that company. Let well, me well, first of all, but I would say, sorry to cut you. I would say the first thing is, what do you know about my country? Because mm. that's where we can start. Yes. You know, I, as bad as it is, what do you, what do you know about, you know, India? Um, because maybe that's where I need to, maybe I can help, you know, so you know, where you are it up and help you understand how India, where India and Canada compare, which means that you have also done your homework, right? What do you know about Nigeria, you know, because maybe then I can fill those gaps between Nigeria and Canada, you know, to help you understand sort of our similar shared experience. Because here's the thing, we're not, let's be, let's be real, we're not talking about the UK. Right? Aren't UK people that come here immigrants? Oh, no, they are, but no one says. You know, I've, had, I've had a lot of UK bosses. Yep. That yep. have landed in Canada recently. <laughs> <laughs> and and they're my bosses. <laughs> or, or yeah. they're coming in from Australia and landing a senior vice president job. Yeah. I'm yet to have a Nigerian immigrant who just landed and on Monday, he that she or he is starting as my boss. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. Well, well, let's talk about that label <laughs> and the assumptions and the stereotypes that is attached to newcomer immigrants. And just being that I've been in this space for a while now, a lot of times when you hear immigrants and newcomers, they are brown or dark skin colored. That's what we're talking about. Exactly. So usually when people from Europe, I had Eastern Europeans who would like, from in my master's program, my very good friend Vicky from Hungary, and we're talking about immigrants and people don't even look at the kids like they're looking at the black folks in class like we're talking to you and how we can help you and so there's that too and i think that's where people now start taking that false truth and become make it in the story versus i'm amazing and i'm just as much a newcomer as that person who is the svp that landed from the uk so today far as you're not born here why don't why aren't we saying you know tell me about your community like i you know your uk experience and my canadian experience People do business in Nigeria. Yeah. Right? There's international business being done in Nigeria. And, um, and so, I don't know. I, I think we can check into those there. And I think we need to really be honest about, you know, the equity of our hiring practices. Okay. And so with that, sometimes people are sitting on this call right now thinking, this is great. However, there's some things that I'm still struggling to overcome where it's like, a lot of times, even for myself, I remember when I went to my master's program and I was going in to start a business and launch it, I got in there with, I can do anything. And I was met with the environment of black entrepreneurs don't get funding, not especially black women. And when we think of CEOs, a lot of times people envision a white man. And I started to believe that as my truth, as I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. And that again, deterred me from pursuing what I was supposed to pursue at the time. And I believed that truth for a while. And I'm now coming to the fact that it, that, that may be true of the environment, but it's not my truth. And so I wanted to share some limiting beliefs. And I, I, I'm inviting you to say, so please share with me some limiting beliefs that you have gone through if they are not on this list and how you were, what you were able to say or reaffirm yourself in to bring you back to the kitchen or God's gift. So there's a couple on the screen. Um, is there anyone you have felt uh, you have gone through and how you navigated that? Oh, definitely. Uh, I am good. At, I am not good enough. I am afraid is huge. Um, uh, yeah, I've probably used them at some point in my life at different ages. But I will. Um, I will do. I am going to do. I am afraid, right? Because 
I recognize right now in my career, I want something different. And if I were to say that there's certain areas where I automatically discount myself, it is totally because of fear, right? Like I'm counting myself out even before I even understood what is possible, you know, or 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 understood what is what I'm what what I'm possible, right? But is it's so confusing. I'm possible is an impossible, and so a lot of times I'm like, oh, that's impossible, versus I'm possible to be in that place, right? And uh, yeah, I, I, I would say that that's a big one. I'm, I am afraid, almost in my opinion, to not be the big one. Because when you're I'm afraid, then you're not good enough. You're, you're, you know what I mean? There's something that's holding you back. There's, you know, probably no reason for my value. Um, I have to be perfect. I, ha you know, like all of so much is in I am afraid. That's a really big one, right? And so that is one that I would say I'm, working my way in now. And as a result, I really want to challenge myself that my next role is one that, that makes me so scared that I'm wetting my panties every single day. <laughs> Amazing. I love that. Because I, I like how you're saying that fear is a lot of times the parent of a lot of these other beliefs. And that's true. I definitely see that. I think for me, one of the ones I have struggled with, I, I don't know if it comes from being a first daughter or it just comes from being a very positive, high energy person, is I have to keep them happy. Mm. I have felt very responsible for a lot of people's happiness mm. in about to think that that feeds my own happiness. People mm. please. And I always thought that was a negative thing. Mm -hmm. Now I've come to this place where being a people pleaser is a positive thing. Like, why don't you want to please people? That is not mm -hmm. a good thing. Mm -hmm. However, that has held me back from keeping myself mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. And I see the correlation now with how that comes from the fear of what those people would not think about you, but the relationship that you might now have because, in quote, you didn't keep them happy. Yeah. So I definitely see how fear might have influenced that. You so, can, I mean, I think I, trying to keep them happy and I'm in control are probably the same. You can't, you can't keep other people happy because remember, I, I talked about we're all, we're all, um, we're all operating as a result of a com, a, com, a accumulation of beliefs, self belief yeah. that yeah. gathered over the course of our lifetime, and so if you don't understand what that you know, sort of the configuration sort of those belief systems, you know, live in another person, then you're going to be trying you are to control their happiness. It is going to drive you crazy. Yeah. You just focus on being your best self. If you bring your best self to every experience and your desire is to leave the experience better than you found it, then people are going to take from it what they need to take from it. And yeah. if it makes them happy, it makes them happy. If it makes them sad, Makes them sad. You're not responsible for however they ingest that experience with you and and choose yeah. to move from it, you know? So what I hear is just as long as you show up with your best self, people are going to filter that experience through whatever lens, experiences, um, thoughts, and opinions they've had. And so it will land differently with different people. This sure. session, will land differently with different people. We're having audio issues right now. And people are like, oh my God, but there's people who are like, I'm going to still hear through. There's people who are like, nah, I can't do this. You know what I mean? So it is just focusing and bringing your best self and your best energy and people will filter through and you don't have to take responsibility for that output. Yeah, show up. Awesome. And so we're coming up to the end of this session. And Kate, I've loved chatting with you as always. However, the people who are still thinking, so what can I do today? I just want to do one thing today so I can show up as my best self tomorrow. I can do all the things that I've been thinking about. And I'm feeling stuck in my career because COVID. Um, people don't like black people right now. like Or the awareness of that black people have been treated wrong this whole time is even more prevalent now given this, um, the issues we're having. The people who are still like waiting things out, waiting for something to happen to do something that they truly want to do that they feel would make them happy. Some people are also really scared of doing that thing because it's like, if, what if it's actually really big and then I lose friends or family because it's been too successful? There is that fear too. But there's a lot of people who are sitting right now saying, what can I do today? Yeah. To show my best of tomorrow. 
So I'm gonna so true story. When when you were starting this episode and I was watching you and you said, you know, let's just center ourselves right now. And I saw your candles in the back. I um rather than sort of compare myself to your environment, I went and did the most smartest thing. I went and put on my my diffuser in my room. Um, because that 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 in that moment felt like that would help to make sure that I'm centered, that I'm that I, through this whole interview, I'm, I'm smelling the scents that are in the room. And I hope that that's a good analogy to what I'm going to say is you have to meet yourself where you're at. I wasn't going to try and see if I can find candles so I can create the same environment that, you know, Jane has in her room. I was going to, I looked around to see, you know, how can I center this room for this moment? So, you know, be kind to yourself. I think it's meet yourself where you're at and find the gratitude, you know, reach, write down all of your things you're grateful for, good or bad, that you've had to go through or that you're going through or that you've accomplished. You know, always, like attitude of gratitude is all you need in the current moment. Don't discount, don't count yourself out of this moment before you're worried about what's gonna happen in the future. You can't, you can't even get there if you're not grateful for where you're at, you know? And there's nothing wrong with where you're at. Absolutely nothing wrong with where you're at. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing wrong. There's something wrong with, with tomorrow comes and your mind is still where we're at today. <laughs> no, it's embracing where you're at every single moment, you know? And and then choosing what is actually possible to achieve based on what you have in your environment. And if there are things missing, maybe tomorrow I'll put some candles so that this moment again, I can light them. If I like the fact that she had candles, you know? But always, at least at a minimum, choose where you're at, accept where you're at, look around with environment for what you can do to just, you know, get you through it and move yourself, you know, just, you know, a little bit forward and stay forward moving, forward thinking, forward learning, you know, and forward execution, right? Always forward. Always forward. Thank you. So be kind to yourself. All the team, i got to work harder, twice as fast and everything. Be kind to yourself. Be grateful for where you have, where you what you have, and where you are today, right? And always be forward moving. Just think about one thing you can do. Maybe kiss candles tomorrow. It might not be as glamorous because everyone wants an Oprah or Murray Murray Folio, but you right now just have your one laptop and your iPhone. So you're gonna make do with what you have because as you taught me, NK, everything you need or everything you need for what you need to do today, you already have inside of you. Always. And you shared that with me. And another quote I'd like to leave with you all is thinking about the past is depression, causes depression. Thinking about the future causes anxiety. And the present is only all we have because that's where we can find true happiness. And that's something I'm working on as someone whose mind is always everywhere. So thank you, NK. Thank you so much for spending this 48 plus minutes with us. Thank you for bringing your awesome light the awesome energy. Everybody, please thank you so much for joining us today. And I'll see you soon. Bye, NK. Love, bye. Love you, Jamie. Love you so much. You cool out black women. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for joining us today to another episode of Jamie of Canada Life. I am really grateful that you stuck with me for this past 49 minutes. I know we've had some audio issues, but you have been a real trooper and I'm grateful for that. In the meantime, if you're here and you're excited about learning more about newcomer journeys, learning about tips and resources that can help you navigate your way as a newcomer or professional immigrant, this is where to be. So please like, share, and you know what to do, subscribe so we can keep this progress together. I really appreciate you. And I know you're going to have a blessed week wherever you are, Toronto, Colombia, and everybody who's joined today. Have a lovely time. Take it easy. Bye.